الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Peace and blessings be upon you all dear viewers from all around the world Welcome to another episode of Revert's World on Ahlul Bayt TV Ahlul Bayt TV is the only channel which is broadcasting the pristine teachings of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam exclusively in the language of English uh, Today alhamdulillah we have brother Ali Kaiser is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Kaiser with us, uh, a brother who will be sharing with us his very interesting account uh, of his journey to Al Islam and the Madhab of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim as as well. So, um, uh, Ali, if we could start by you telling us your, your, your origins in terms of your ethnic background, where your parents are from, and so on and so forth. Bismillah rahman rahim coming from Switzerland, my ethnic background, my, my father's Swiss, his family has been there for many, many hundreds of years, should I say, or as far as we know, as far back as we know, my, my mother's been from Netherlands, from the Holland, uh, from Holland, so, yeah, European, European, okay, ethical background, yeah. Okay, and uh, in terms of um, your religious Upbringing. I mean, were you brought up as an atheist, agnostic, Christian? I was. I was brought up so easily as a regular Christian, as you, you'd expect someone to be brought up, or as you see, most people being brought up. You you learn about, you learn about certain things. You go to to church once in a while. For example, you go for Christmas. You might do something for Easter. Um, you do the the. You get baptized. You do the communion. And you hear about you hear about religion on in school in religious class. You hear the all the stories sure. about the different the prophets and the, the different characters. Okay. But that's as far as I was kind of in touch with sure. with religion. And just because just you mentioned the, the the personalities, obviously the prophets and uh, and so on and so forth. What was the style of uh, the, the the sermons that you would hear as a youngster? I mean, was it something that you were intrigued by that you were interested by or was it something like for a lot of us growing up wasn't really connecting with us and maybe in some circumstances we were even falling asleep which of those two categories did you fall into the few times you did go to church um, going to church it was more something the religion was always something to me f for myself I went to church but I the connection was not too much to the church, but the connection to, to God was more there from myself. But I liked hearing the stories which were ta uh, taught in religious class when you, for example, had to draw a picture of one of the situ uh, one of the, the things for, and I remember drawing the picture of um, um, Prophet Ibrahim -Islam, when he was about to sacrifice his son. I, I remember that I had to draw that in a picture. I had, kind of clearly have in front of me wha how I drew it. Mm. So I was someone, I, I like the, the religious classes. I liked it a lot. So I was not falling asleep. Okay, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, that's good. Uh, you're making me feel bad about <laughs> my own self. Um, and uh, d did you have any, any other siblings that you grew up with or, or was it just your, your good self? Yeah, well, my parents, mashallah. Uh, and of course, your parents, of course. But I'm an only child. Okay. I'm an only child. Okay. And how much of an influence, how much of a religious influence did your parents have on you? Because you said that you, 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 know, you quite enjoyed hearing the biblical stories mm -hmm. from, I guess, the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Was this something that was, uh, that was encouraged by your parents or was this just something you were doing on an individual basis? I, th I think it, it was encouraged by them because they also they gave me the opportunity to do those, uh, for example, the communion and the, the thing you do when you're a little bit older. Um, I think they were also they were happy I did it and they because they are religious in a way as most people are religious in some way you know saying there is God go to the church and for example for Christmas trying you know have good moral values and so on so yeah from that point there was religion was there but it was not like like religion is now the life became religion now mm. there was religion was more a part to life sure. on, on on different occasions and of course they also encourage it by you know by making sure you go to school you learn you do what you have to learn 
and by encouraging you to, to go to those classes to do the the things that would that they that school would require maybe might be the wrong word but suggest or the church would suggest you to do sure but in a open not strict way but in an open more than a feel free to do it way then in terms of you have to do it okay it so it wasn't okay so it wasn't enforced but uh no. in, maybe encouraged uh, to do encouraged, it encouraged in, to do implicitly it. encouraged um as a youngster do, i mean a lot of people that i speak to on 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 this show seem to well not always but for some they they can always re remind they can always remember a particular incident in their past or a number of occasions in their past where they either communicated with Allah or God or they had some dreams or the, you know or just generally they would kneel down and, 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 and make a quick prayer before going to bed I mean what was it like for you I mean you spoke about the drawings and hit, enjoying the stories but did you did you were you able to um, develop a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your maker I did yes I did from let's say around about 89 ish maybe I, I started to pray like the way I knew it like I folded my hands in them for example before going to bed or when I was in bed or I just prayed for good health to you know for good good tidings for my parents sometimes on the street when I saw someone I felt sorry for her I thought that might be in need of something or that can you know might be in need of some compassion I like oh, yes dear God please just Please give him a happy life, a good family, make sure he's well off, and so on. And so the connection was there. The connection was there. I think, good, uh, yeah, from, from from quite an early age of being aware of of things. Sure. And yeah. uh, did you ever, as again, uh, some of us did as youngsters, did you ever, I don't know, pray for a new pair of shoes or something materialistic, like I don't know, a big <laughs> toy, or, or uh -huh. were you? Were you looking for more metaphysical um, rewards? That's a good question. I think I was looking for a metaphysical, so to say, from quite an early age. I ask, I ask myself quite often why I'm here, what, what's the purpose? But I also prayed for material things like, um, for example, in school when we went to gym class, yeah. oh God, please let me score a goal. I haven't scored a goal in a long time. <laughs> things like that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Um, you said you're you're from a Catholic background, I, I believe. Yes, exactly. Right. Um, tell me, what, what's what, I mean? This is it the cruci crucifix sign? I'm not, I don't know if I'm doing it correctly because I'm I'm for, I was from a Protestant background. Yeah. But the uh, did you used to do that? I I used to do that. Yes. Okay. I I when I for example because I played ice hockey for example, quite a long time of my life. Um, I did that for example a lot of time or for long many many years before I entered the ice every time I I, I did this yes hmm. um, of course upon entering the church I did it yes and the significance is what just to is it like a declaration of your faith or or what it was it's good it's a good way of saying it. it was a declaration of faith it was not like of course I said father son holy spirit but to me it never was three things of course you heard three you heard people talking about the Trinity, you heard people about talking about um, um, the Prophet Jesus Islam being the Son of God and so on. Yeah, I, I said that kind of myself because you were taught to, but when I prayed I was I was not praying to Jesus. Or I, to me it was always kind of the connection with the Creator himself and not with and also the sign doing the sign it was as you said a symbol of faith but not for the Trinity or something like that, no. Sure. So you, you didn't you didn't see uh, Jesus, peace and blessed be upon him, to be who your prayer should be directed to? No, I, when I entered the church, I bowed down before the cross because the cross hangs sure. in every church, of like course. Right, right in you, front you can't of you. Miss it, yeah. Exactly, but no, it was, as far as I remember, I never directed my prayers towards him. He, to me, he was like, he was a prophet, he was a, the, the figure the religion was based on. Sure. But God was way beyond. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely relate uh, to that. Of, I mean, you mentioned how you, you started of your own volition becoming quite uh, religious 
thinking of metaphysical matters at a very young age, you mm -hmm. know, pre pre teen years even, which is uh, arguably quite young, which obviously is a good thing. However, you you would have sooner or later become a teenager, and there must have been social pressures, peer pressures around you that would have meant that you would have eventually d done some things which now, obviously, as a Muslim, we would uh, frown upon, mm -hmm. whether that be, I don't know, drugs or alcohol or whatever, women. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, did, did these things affect you? Not for a long time, um, unfortunately, or of course, however, from whichever point of view you want to see it in this society, um, at some point it did, but I would place the barrier there at around 18 to 20 that I kind of surrendered. Because mm. until then I was really, I was dedicated to what I did. I, had my, I was dedicated to sports and, and when others went out in the evening, for example, I got the key of, uh, to the arena from a friend. I went to do my workouts. I went to do my workouts on Sundays, for example. And also when people went for a beer after the after uh, after games and so on, I always was like, no, I didn't like it. I did not want to. Um, also, be, even though people say, yeah, come on, let's go, let's go out, you know, this. For example, women that alcohol, this, it was not something appealing to me for a really, really long time. But then, yeah, you're in that society, you're you're surrounded by it. It's a subject like so often, it's it's so in your face. In, in this, in, in in the West, so at one time, it, yeah, well, it, it got to you, mm. but mashallah, only for a short period of time and not too hard. Alhamdulillah. To so, like so you were able to hold it off until the age of 18. Uh, many of us would be very impressed with uh, with, with that um, period of time that you you were able to resist uh, the, the let's call it the temptations. But what was the underlying reason why you were able to hold back for so long? Was it because of the fact that you were conscious about sports? Or was it because you had this uh, religious conviction? Or maybe was it just a combination of the two? I think sports might have been the thing I could hold on to. But in the end, there's always been... I've, I've read a lot of books, like, um, as soon as they finished one, I would start another one um, on spiritual spiritual matters so in the end it was spirituality but let's say in in the costume of sports sure so to sure. say yeah okay I, I, I will put it that we'll okay. put it that way sure so I mean uh, again the, these books that you you were reading at this particular point in town in your life what messages, what were you taking from these books? Because these books, I'm assuming, hadn't at this point been, had anything per se to do with Islam. They may have mentioned Islam in passing, but there were books on spirituality. So what yeah. were you taking from these books? It was, in the end, it was about finding your inner self. I would say it was more, it was a lot about mental training, about focusing, but then there were also books that went beyond, that went more to the meta, metaphysical side. How do you know, how, you know, the, the, how everything works and, and so on and so on. So, and there was also books about, you know, prayer, how a prayer should come from the inside. So it was not really Christian books. It was more, of course, it was based on a Christian society, but it was more to the metaphysical, spiritual side and more, let's say, maybe new age, but not too new age, not the, what you know from, you know, like religion, Christianity itself, but like... Sure taken it a little bit to a, to a more spiritual spiritual side. Sure. And um, did you, I was going to say fall into the trap, but that may be uh, slightly unkind, but did you, did you go along the path that a lot of Westerners tend to do when they're looking into spirituality in terms of maybe looking into religion like Hinduism or Buddhism or Taoism? Yeah. Um, in, in the end, I have to say there was always... My, it always was the guideline of a of a divine religion underneath it. You know, I was looking for. I always continue my my search, so to say. But I ended up um, reading a lot about Buddhism because of the also the the warrior background they have with the samurai and everything, mm. because it related a lot to the sports again. Sure. But I I 
ended up there, I also tried to meditate, or I even meditated, let's say, once a day, and tried to do more meditations than just once a day. So I ended up in the end there, but still, it was to me a divine thing, in as far as I thought that the word Buddha, even though I knew it was a figure, but when I said, for example, doing something wrong, well, God, Buddha, Allah, please forgive me, I was, Buddha for me was just the word. God, Buddha, you know, Allah, you said. Exactly. Because uh, I didn't know how to call him, right? Because I thought, okay, Muslims call him Allah. We in the West, we call him God. In the East, I call him Buddha. Uh -huh. So it was always the thing beyond. Sure. But I didn't have find, kind of didn't pay, find the, the, the path beyond what, what, the, what the books were telling me. Sure. So you got two out of three, right? Allah, God. Maybe yeah, exactly. Buddha, Buddha was uh, yeah, exactly. slightly contentious. Exactly. Although, obviously, I'm sure you're aware that um, well, there are some theories that he was actually a prophet, and and, and maybe the, the, his teachings have somehow been uh, deviated later. That's um, one theory that I've, I've come across in the past. Um, your very first encounter with Islam, um, again, you may have come across it in passing in the books you're reading, mm -hmm. but. I mean, did you ever come across anybody who spoke about Islam at all? No, I actually didn't. One thing in the book that, um, that you're mentioning now, I read one of those books about the, the more spiritual side, was that some, one, of, one of those authors said that the Muslims say that the Christians are on the right path, but haven't taken the, the next step yet. And I always used that in a debate when I was talking to someone, when it was about religions, I kind of... Supported them, supported Muslims in that way, and then, but I never got to encounter someone until, till yeah, about one, one and a half years back from mm. now. Mm. Um, I mean, how does that play in terms of you? Obviously, must have been exposed to the media, and I can only assume that not always, of course, but the the portrayal of Islam in Switzerland cannot be good, um, at least not all the time. The yeah. majority of the time it would be negative. So uh, surely you must have had a negative image of Islam, no? I would say yes and no. Of course you read, unfortunately, what you read about, for example, what happened on 9-11. You built up your anger against those people just simply because, because, out of, because you don't know to how to differentiate be between the people who, for example, did those attacks and what, what Islam truly is. Um, so yes, there kind of was like a yes, I was influenced by the the negative the negative image portrayed by the Western media. Mm. I would say I would say so yes. Okay, and so how was it for you when you first encountered a Muslim for the first time? I mean, did you? Envisage that person as being a potential terrorist or a backward person or anything like uh, like this? No, I when I think like this, the first Muslim person I encountered consciously is uh, my wife, whom I'm married to now. So, mashallah, yeah. Okay. She's a good person to, to be the first impression of Islam, sure, yeah. Sure. So, and obviously, she she gave you a positive, positive impression. Most definitely, yes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, at the juncture at which you met your wife, what was your knowledge of Islam like? Did you know much or none at all, nothing at all? I did not know too much at all. I just knew it was a, a religion, one of the three big religions as we call it. To me, as I said earlier, it was like the religion of the Middle East, whereas Christianity is the religion of the West. Mm. So to say, and there was not. I didn't know. I didn't know too much about it. But it was like all kind of in search of the same, the same, the same thing. Sure. So to say, yeah. Sure, sure. And um, so, how did you go about? I mean, uh, I'm assuming you maybe entered into debates or discussions with who who was she wasn't your wife at that particular point, but your 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 future wife. Was this how you? Began to learn more, or how did it happen? Exactly, it was um, just by by her challenging my my thought because of the the God Buddha Allah thing, the three things that she mentioned. But that one is not is not God; is a person, is a 
is a figure who, who has a nice philosophy and brought a nice philosophy into the, to, the, to the East, a nice way of life, but he's not God. Mm. I think that, that thing that really cha challenged me, challenged me in how I have to review my, my view of the world and review my view of, of religions. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And then also made me want to learn more about, learn more about Islam. Okay, so you began to learn more, what, from just discussions or did you start reading yourself? Discussion first and then reading myself, reading myself a German translation of the Quran. Um, not too many internet sites, only particular ones because I've been told from, like, from the beginning, watch out, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of deviations out there, so to say. Uh, she mentioned to me quite from the beginning on, look, this is what happened right at the start, after, after the, the, the death of our prophet. Um, and I was like, I found it strange that, that something like that could happen mm -hmm. to such a precious or important individual and then his family. So that kind of got me to research into the right area, mashallah. Sure. Yeah. It, it didn't put you off thinking that... Um you know, Muslims could, could behave in such a way to, to the Prophet and then subsequently the Prophet's family. Some people may have thought, well, you know, I don't really want to get involved with people like this. Well, maybe it's because of my, of my, my inner nature, because I was always looking for, like, the, a, re, a true meaning to, to life. I was always, I like movies with heroes in it, like mm. people who fought for something, be it like William Wallace, in, in Scotland, or being like a, you might have heard about William Tell, the Swiss national hero with the, who shot the apple with the crossbow of his son's head because he would not bow down to the hat of a ruler of that time. So I was always attached to that. So when I heard the story about of Islam and what happened then to a small minority by a big majority, I could relate to it really, really quickly. Mm. Okay, alhamdulillah. So you uh, began to research a lot more, reading selective websites and uh, now that you were becoming more cognizant of what Islam entailed how did it sit with you because obviously you had done a lot of research previously on as you said books on spirituality so you had I mean you're in a relatively comfortable place now for, you're, you're suddenly reading a totally new ideology I mean did it didn't it wasn't it foreign to a lot of the stuff maybe that you'd uh, already read Actually, a lot of the things I read was what I was looking for before, but did not know where to look for. Mm -hmm. For example, the thing of not drinking alcohol, because it just don't, it did not appeal to me. Um, or the thing, I didn't, the, you know, the distance between men and women, as far as, as long as you're not married. I never liked, for example, to be touched too much, even when I, when I was a Christian, also growing up as a teenager. Mm -hmm. Or when, you know, even in family, when when people will come up to you and, you know, kiss you and things like that, I was like, it, it just did not appeal to me. And also the views I had to life, um, the respect for my parents, because a lot of the times in these societies, they like, you know, dissing of the parents, for example. Sure. So did that to my parents, I was like, watch your mouth or you're going to be in trouble. Because mm. you're talking about my parents here and be clear on that. You're talking about the people who brought me up and who tried their best to give me, you know, to give me what I need as, as, a, as a child and as a as a young adult in the end. Sure. So those values have always kind of been there. And when I read what Islam stood for, it's the connection was there straight away, kind of. Alhamdulillah. Yes. OK, thank you very much. Uh, we're, we're due to go to a break now. Mm -hmm. When we come back, uh, we can talk a bit more about uh, your life after, or mm -hmm. as you decided to uh, revert to Islam, and then Inshallah. afterwards. And uh, I'm quite interested to know how life is, what life is like for a revert Muslim follower of the Ahlul Bayt in Switzerland as well. So um, I look forward to that. Uh, make sure you join us when we come back after this short break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.
The Zara Trust is a respected and officially registered charity with its headquarters in the United Kingdom. The Zara Trust is currently the only charitable endowment that produces quality Islamic educational programs for children and adults in various languages. These are widely distributed to many Shia and non-political satellite channels for your benefit. The Zara Trust is also working on humanitarian projects globally in Iraq to help support widows and sponsor orphans, in Afghanistan to build schools for children, in Iran food aid distribution and in Pakistan to rebuild the lives of those affected by catastrophic flooding through building houses and replacing lost cattle. The Trust set up a house for Western students in the holy city of Najaf and is currently accepting applicants for next year. Set up a monthly donation now to help change people's lives. You can set up your donation to the account information on your screen or go to our website at www.zaratrust.com and help make a difference today. Stop. Had an accident in the last three years? Not your fault? We can help to get your compensation. We manage your claim for you whether a new accident or an old accident. No hassle, no worries, no fees. You keep everything of your 100% compensation. Call us now to report your claim on 0800 910 1000 or visit www.smartclaims.org. Advertise on Ahlbeg TV and uplift your business. Whether you're looking for a local, national or even a global English-speaking audience, we can certainly help you. We offer competitive advertisement spots, creative packages that are market competitive and value for money. We can arrange for your advert to be designed for you. We have a range of packages to suit every budget, with prices from as little as £15 a spot. Visit our website at hellbait.tv forward slash advertise and register your details to receive a special promotional code. Call 0044 121 258 0522 or email advertise at hellbait.tv. World on Ahlul Bayt TV with myself, Abdurro Shukoya, and our guest today, Ali Kaiser, a brother from Switzerland who is sharing with us his journey to Al Islam and the Madhab of the Ahlul Bayt. Peace and blessings be upon them. Um, prior to the break, uh, Brother Ali, you mentioned how you came across a Quran in German. Yes, exactly. And you started to read it. But I also know that you said that you came across some CDs in German as well. Exactly. I want to know what your experience was like when you first encountered the, either the reading or the audio of the Quran for the first time. Because obviously you had prior knowledge of these prophets, these personalities, these divine personalities sent by God, glorified and exalted. Uh, and now you're able to access them, but from, a, if you like, a, a different uh, mindset, a different mm -hmm. ideology, but recognizes all of these none the same. I mean, how was it for you when you came across the Qur'an and, and, and just generally the Qur'an, but also these personalities that you had information about prior to reading the Qur'an? Mm -hmm. It was, it was a, as you said, a translation of the Qur'an in, in German and a CD an audio CD where someone just spoke the translation of the Quran in sure. German and I listened to that one first because it was for sports a lot on the road uh, also in, in, in the plane and I I just had it on my, my how you say my mp3 player and just listened to it listened to it listened to it and even before or when I woke when I slept I, I, I left it on and suddenly I realized wow I slept for a long time just so many surahs must have passed <laughs> and I woke up wet from sweating I had strange dreams um i don't remember what i just know i, I woke up like 
like someone w would have would have you know sh uh, shook me for really a lot, quite some time and really really hard. So everything was like up and down, and mm. so that was uh, the first experience from hearing the translation of uh, of Allah's word. Mm. And then when I got some more time, less traveling, I picked up the the, the this, this translation and started reading it from the back with a. I recommend it to s start with a short surah so you don't get tangled up with a long one. Sure. You just, you know, bits and pieces sure. in the beginning. And that felt so powerful. So every time I, I would read it, I had goosebumps all over my body. It was like, it was an undescribable feeling, which mm, kind of gave me even more certainty, like, okay, this, yeah, m it, this, just uh, stick to it or go into more research more upon it about this religion yes you know, well it was it was kind of clear to me from after the first couple of days that yes that's it i just did not, not have the time then because as i mentioned wasn't you know was in pre-season training and traveling a lot sure to do what was required to do but i said from almost day one okay that's going to be my religion inshallah but i'll just have i have to do what i have to do because i gave my word to it and I wanted to do it and stay in sports and prepare and so on. But as soon as I had more time, I embraced the religion based on those encounters. Alhamdulillah. As and mentioned. and uh, when, when did this take place roughly? It was Ramzan one year back, so it was in September and August 2009. 2009, so, so yeah, one and a half years. Well, nearly one and a half, yes. well yeah, one and a half years ago now. Exactly. Alhamdulillah, congratulations. Yeah. Um, what about your parents? Did you tell them? I, I told them, yes, I did not tell them right from the beginning, but they kind of tasted something already. Really? Yeah. What, they saw you praying or something? No, I, I prayed um, at their home after I told them. So okay. I asked them if it was okay. Um, of course, to them, it's, it, it's new, it's uh, something you have to adapt to, because of course there's differences or there's some things you don't do anymore, or things you, you, you try to stay away from. Sure. But they're... There was absolutely no problem to it. They were welcoming to it. They're asking questions about it. Even present you with articles in the newspaper. Really? Yeah, and asking about, um, you know, but you know what? Yeah, saying, but they write this and this and that, and then you have to say, yeah, well, look, don't don't believe too much what they write because they might be against it. But all in all, it was they they were they were okay with it and supportive in a way. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, yeah. And uh, how has it been since it's been 18 months, as we uh, said? Uh, how's it been? Because uh, I'm assuming when you reverted, most of that time has now been spent back in Switzerland as opposed to Canada. Exactly, Is that yeah, correct? Exactly. Uh, I mean, wh what's it like being a, a revert Muslim in Switzerland? My experiences, mashallah, so far have been, have been good. Of course, <laughs> you yourself have to change a lot. You have to get you rid of a, a lot of customs and adapt new customs as much as, for example, you know, clean, wh what's purity, how to lead a clean life and so on. But overall in Switzerland, it's, um, for what I've encountered, it's been good. For example, my, my employers whom I've worked for in the past two years, they allow me to do my prayers. For example, I work in a, in a separate room they're like interested in why and how and let's sit down and talk about it when we have a, a meeting kind of to see where we're at work-wise. We, we spent a lot of time on speaking about religion mm. because one of my employers, actually both of them, my my bosses, they are pretty religious Christians. Right. So we, we spend a lot of time in discussion actually. Right. So from that point of view, for myself, it's been really, mashallah, easy. Mm. It's um, forgive my naivety. It's just I don't know. Maybe because okay, you're Switzerland, but I know you're not a million miles away from a place like Denmark, for example, mm -hmm. where I know uh, uh, even somewhere like Holland, where you, you mentioned that your your mother yes. was from originally, um, where there seems to be a lot more hostility towards Islam. Mm -hmm. I mean, has has this hostility not uh, not uh, affected uh, Switzerland? What one big thing that was on about one year back was the Minaret initiative. I think that went around the globe almost. That's right, yeah. Um, where the vote was 
should Muslims be allowed to build minarets or not? And apparently it was the vote was no. Even though a lot of people regret this, um, also the religious council, exam uh, for example, of Switzerland, where the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims are represented all by three pe uh, persons, they regret it, and they feel sorry for not being active enough to enter the debate and saying what should have been said to allow it. Um, hostility, there's always people hostile in the end. I don't think it's too hostile, but it's also not too pro. It mm. is a it is a, a small country, you know, a small country, Christian country, quite some Muslims, but people just don't know too much about it. So you hear the the odd commentary about something when you when you listen or when you read on when, when people comment on about um, about what they read in newspapers. So yeah, not too hostile, but also not there sure. needs a lot to be done to display a, a good picture of Islam and what it, what it really stands for as, a, as opposed to what it, those paintings that people in Denmark did sure. or the hostility in the Netherlands. Sure. Alhamdulillah, you have a, a, a beautiful command of the English language, but I know that German is yeah. your, your first language. Exactly, yes. So my assumption would be that if, it were, if you had a choice between reading something in German or English, you would probably choose German. Exactly, yes. Therefore, my next question is um, in terms of material, not just for yourself, but just in terms of, you know, further propagation in mm -hmm. Switzerland. Uh, how much material do you have in, in the German language, especially about the teachers of the, of the Ahlul Bayt? Yeah. Well, we, we bring our books, a lot of books from London, because, mashallah, there's a lot of books here. Mm. In Switzerland, there's a big centre. In Germany, there's a big centre in Hamburg okay. that has quite an, a good online library where you can order books with really good books, also translation of some, of, for example, Ali Shariati or um, Ayatollah Motahari. So also really deep work. Translated into German. Translated into German, exactly. So you, there's good material out there, but of course it's not even close to what you have in English. Sure. There's not, not even close. Sure. So yeah. I guess the majority of your reading is in, in English then? Well, now that I know that there's the, the big, the big centre in Hamburg, we order quite some books from there, but still we, we bring books home from London every time we visit family here because we just have much, much, much more, sure. much more here. Sure. Obviously that's uh, an area that needs to be uh, looked, looked at. What, what about, um, whereabouts do you live in, in Switzerland? In Zurich. In Zurich. Zurich, the biggest, biggest city for the... Sure, sure. And uh, do you have centres near, nearby, Islamic centres nearby? When you, when you go online, we, we try to find something for Muharram when you're back. When you go online, you, you find the Sunni mosques. And there, there are quite a lot of them. In, in, in the city area of Zurich, there are quite a lot of, of Sunni mosques. But when you go online to find a, find a Shia mosque, it's really difficult. For example, if you look online, the first thing about is the opinion of the Wahhabis on the Shia, which is not aggressive, which is sort of politically correct. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is on, on, on a chat forum, is there a Shia mosque in Switzerland? And there's no reply to it. Mm -hmm. So that kind of shows you the exposure is not too, too big. But then on further research, we found a really beautifully done Lebanese mosque just on the border of Zurich. And on top of that, an Iranian mosque. Wow. And then going from there, I got to know there's one in Bern, there's one in Geneva, there's one in Lucerne. But you have to, to research more. Sure. To, to, or you have to know it sure. to, to find those places. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> I think um, it sounds quite difficult, but to be honest, in, in some ways it's a lot easier than it was back in the day because, you know, when I, I first became a Muslim, there was no internet. So if you weren't. If you didn't know who to speak to, I mean, of course, in a place like London, it wasn't so much of an issue, but um, there are many people around the UK and other parts of the world who, you know, just just through luck or just by going into a bookshop and meeting with another brother were able to um, find find something. Now, you, you mentioned this, this, this particular building. Um, you said there was a Lebanese centre and above it an Iranian exactly. centre. And this is in Zurich, yeah, right? Yeah, right on the border, right sure, outside. Sure, sure. 
How does that how does that work for somebody like you? I mean, I'm assuming based on what we see in different parts of the world that the Lebanese center will have their programs in Arabic possibly mm -hmm. and the Iranian center will have theirs in Persian. Exactly. And I'm assuming since it's only been a year and a half that you haven't quite command no. grasped no. the command of the Arabic or the Persian no. language. So what do you do? Do you do what we used to do and just go and sit and don't necessarily understand what's going on? Well, what we do is we listen to lectures online from London. Okay. A lot because we're both, mashallah, quite solid in the English language and because we have a really, really good speakers here, mashallah. Um, but also we, we try to go there as, as much as we can, but the programs there are like are very, very limited. Mm, because Islam is not so big, also the the funding is more difficult there. From there's um, for example, there's no resident alim there. Um, they w what they do is uh, do a kumail on Thursdays mm -hmm. within the praying congregation, and then the Friday prayers. There might be something on Tuesday in summers, mm -hmm. might be not. But there's n for example, there's no one who speaks on a regular basis, and also it's more like. The prayer starts when there's enough people, sure. which kind of shows you there's not too many people. Mm -hmm. Also, sometimes the connection is not there that the, the Iranians, for example, they lead their prayers. They have someone who leads the prayer, and uh, my brother and I, my, my brother-in-law and I, we were in the Lebanese mosque. We wanted to do a Jamaat, and there was no one there, so we prayed on our own. And then we found out that 20 minutes later, upstairs, someone was leading the prayer. So there's, yeah. Yeah. A little bit of work that needs to be done. Sure, sure. And uh, in terms of reverts, Brother Ali, are you? Uh, are there many other Ali's out there in Switzerland? Um, <laughs> I've encountered some, but they're they're all <laughs> native Muslims. Right. There is one 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 brother who's who's um, retired now already. Who was a Sunni for seventeen years, and now he's joined our school of thought for the last five years, I think. But he's the only, only revert I've encountered so far. Really? Yes. How how do born Muslims in Switzerland, how do they treat you? Of, it's the first time as I went there, I I just got in contact with the one who who, who opened the mosque because I was there before they opened it. Mm -hmm. So, I had a, a talk with him and a connection to him straight away. With the other ones, I got in contact. Let's say after. Uh, second maybe third time some approach me the others I approach them by just by entering and saying assalamu alaikum to everybody sure. so they would see okay he, he's really one of us he's not just some some European who lost his way and wants to see mm -hmm. what, what's in here so but to, because of maybe also the language barrier it is more difficult but when they see you coming on a regular basis and they see you um, speaking to some brothers who who they know they, they come up to you and want to know and they're going to want to share and want to know what you're about and so on. Sure, yeah. sure. Alhamdulillah. And uh, the plans that you, I mean, you know, you said there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Exactly, yes. What, what plans do you have in mind to, to, to help to, to, to boost the situation there? What, what kind of is unfortunate for us is that when you, when you, look at the media and who's in the media speaking for Islam, it's either the, a strong Wahhabi mosque in Switzerland, who's, let's say, those representatives who are all reverts as well, by the way. Really? Yes, um, studying Islamic sciences. I went to, into that class as well, just to see what, um, what Islam is portrayed like at university. And unfortunately, it's very much as science, like biology is to a biologist. Mm. And the Shia are wrong anyways. But then the seventh lecture, for example, started with a, a picture of the shrine of Imam Rida, alayhi salam. So which kind of shows you the Shia are wrong, but then in the end, one lecture is about all about Mamun and Imam Rida, alayhi salam. So there's a lot, a lot of people don't know about the truth, so to say, and base their opinion upon what Islam critics write, what the the other Islamic sects have to say and there's no one of our school to represent them and as I said if you go online we are not represented we're not represented by a Swiss community who 
make sure all the Shias are united. We'll make sure if someone, for example, goes to travel to Switzerland, finds his mosque right away in his area or his group right away so he can go on a Friday or on a Thursday evening or whatever. So in terms of that, there's a, a lot of work to be done also to make sure that the, the, pe the Muslims who are there kind of open up themselves and, you know, try to cross the barrier of the language, sure. well, which of course is a barrier because there's a lot of people who, who immigrated because of the war, for example, in Afghanistan and in, Le and in Lebanon, which makes it difficult to, you know, to find their way in, into society. Okay. Yes. So you want to try and, what, um, help them speak German or bring, bring them together under mm -hmm. one umbrella? Inshallah, we'll try to bring them together under one umbrella first, try to make sure everyone knows who is where and where's the centers and everything, which was difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I was really kind of came home two or three times, like head down, like, oh no, the people are not so pro for it, saying, yes, we have to, but you know, we lack the people, we lack um, the motivation, because they're, they're all doing their, their wajibat and they're doing their duas there, but as I said, the exposure is not there, and sure. I think it's important for our school as well, that people know what we say, what, what the true root of Islam is, so it doesn't get bashed all the time in the media. Sure. But now, mashallah, there's an, another brother who called me, uh, one and a half weeks ago, who's been trying to tackle this issue for a long time as well. So we've decided now to give sure. it another attempt. And mashallah, I got the chance to speak to two mulamas here whilst in London about this issue who've been very supportive to it and offered their help as well. And we try to, maybe anybody hears about this now in the German-speaking area who could be of help, be of support, any kind of support, people with experience were more than welcome to help to strengthen the point of the, the Shia in Switzerland. Inshallah. So Hopefully, inshallah, when uh, uh, the funds are available, we'd love to come to Switzerland and maybe do inshallah. a documentary over inshallah. there. And you can show us, show us around and we can meet some of the brothers. And, inshallah. and uh, that, that will help, of course, of course, to bring it home for our viewers as well. Inshallah. Um, but um, as I was mentioning to you off air, make sure you start watching Ahl Bay TV as well, just yes. so that you have some sort of connection. Although, inshallah. alhamdulillah, by the sounds of things, you do have uh, a small community there. And just finally, um, how is the situation between, say, you and the Sunni brothers and sisters in Switzerland? I know there are a lot more. The, mm -hmm. the, they are, um, in terms of number, obviously, yes. there's a lot more of them. But, I mean, do you ever go to pray with them? And if you do, is it good, bad? They, you know, how do they treat you? Do they, are they welcoming? Um, I, I've been working with a, with a Sunni in my previous um, office. And we, we had some interesting discussions. It was, it was respectful. We have a private friend who's a Sunni as well. And we, do, we talk, we, we go about, you know, the differences and so on, which is on a respectful basis. I first encountered actually when I went when I went to our center, because as I mentioned, there's two centers on top of each other on the ground floor. There's a Sunni mosque, and from the internet I just saw the the, the address, so I just entered the first the first door I found, and I, I was for a Jummah prayer, and then yeah, everybody just came in and prayed on the on the floor. There was no no stones there, and so I was kind of confused. So mm -hmm. that was my actually my first encounter with with a with a Muslim center in Switzerland. Sure. Which was kind of, yeah, then kind of funny. Yeah. Oh, you're not been you're not been back since. No, I always went. Oh, upstairs. Of course, of course, <laughs> yeah. yeah, in the same building. <laughs> always went right. upstairs. That's right. But f for me, there's no mu not much too much interaction. I don't see too much interaction between sure. those centers. I realize there's some brothers from downstairs coming upstairs be just because they missed the entrance, mm. and then our brothers say, oh, "You were most welcome to your mosque as well." Sure. And then they say. Yeah, but it's not, it's not the, the Bosnian mosque, is it? No, no, it's not. Oh, yeah. So we go downstairs for the language. Right, okay, That's okay. So kind of basically, it's, it, yeah, so it's on, on ethnic. Of, of course, it would be um, As well, yes. according to school, schools of thought, but um, so it's pretty much predominantly a, a Bos Bosnian centre. Yes. Mm. Bosnian, Lebanese, Iranian. Iranian. That's quite an with interesting a mix. Of, with a lot of Afghani people, also Pakistanis and other. Okay. Strong Afghani basis what, there. In in on all three floors or No no the Afghani people are strong with the Iranians. Okay. Of, of the, course, the, the of language. course. Persian, yeah, of yes. course, of course. And they obviously follow the Ahlubayt these these um, um, they actually I have to mention them because they did a 
actually did a Julus at uh, the night before Ashura this year, downtown Zurich, mm. escorted by four or five police cars. Okay. In rush hour over the Bahnhofstrasse, which is one of the most expensive shopping streets in the world. Wow. And the police actually, mashallah, shut this down. How, many, how many people were there? Uh, roughly 150. Okay. To 200 know. something it is. And, and was this, is this something that's been going on for many a year? Actually, I've The legacy of Karbala continues to spread globally. This year, Ahlul Bayt TV are seeking 1,000 donors to contribute £72 or $120. To support this cause and to help keep the legacy of Karbala spreading, call us today on 0203 355 1489 or visit www.ahlulbayt.tv, the Muharram Donation Drive. Together we strive.